Hi, I'm David Reardon with the Allied Institute, and I'm going to do an overview of a new systematic review that was published in SAGE Open Medicine that looked at all pregnancy-associated deaths in record linkage studies relative to delivery, termination of pregnancy, or natural losses. First, it's important that, to know that record linkage studies all agree that abortion and miscarriage are both linked to higher rates of premature death compared to giving birth. The negative effects on longevity are greater following abortion than miscarriage, however. Why? What is record linkage and why is it so important? Well, maternal mortality studies based on death certificates alone are notoriously inaccurate. Coroners are often unaware of recent births, much less miscarriages or abortions. One analysis shows that statistics based on death certificates alone identify only 74% of deaths during pregnancy or within a year of a delivery because the coroner was unaware of the pregnancy. Whereas the same approach identifies only 12% of the deaths following miscarriage and only 1% of deaths following abortion. So what record linkage involves is taking death certificates of adult women and linking those death certificates to their medical records to identify any treatments related to a birth, abortion, miscarriage, or other pregnancy. Only in this way can you identify if there is a death that follows a previous pregnancy. And then you can look more deeply into the cause of that death and whether or not the pregnancy in any way contributed to either the physical or psychological state of the woman and her subsequent health and death. The first time a proper record linkage study of pregnancy loss associated deaths was done was in 2004 in Finland. It showed that in the year following an abortion, the risk of death was 83 per 100,000 women compared to only 57 for non-pregnant women, 28 for women who gave birth, and in that case it included nine months of pregnancy for the birth group women, so it's actually a longer period of time, and 51 for women who had miscarriage. In this 2017 systematic review, we did a search for all studies associated with pregnancy and mortality and identified 989 studies of which 68 used the record linkage, which we just described. So they were the highest quality. Of those, 11 reported on deaths associated with pregnancy loss, abortion, or miscarriage. The others reported on deaths associated with, with delivery, but did not do a breakdown or analysis to show deaths associated with pregnancy loss. The main finding is that all record linkage studies revealed a higher rate of premature death following pregnancy loss, approximately double that compared to women who give birth. While miscarriage was associated with higher risk of death compared to birth, the impact of abortion was greater. The elevated risk is evident within the first 180 days and persists for at least 10 years, as you can see in this chart. There's also a dose effect. Each pregnancy loss increases the risk of premature death. As you'll see in this chart, the increased risk is about 50% for one abortion, over double for two abortions, and nearly three times more for women who had three or more abortions. The risk of death following pregnancy loss remains elevated even after controlling for psychological differences and economic classes. The greatest increase is in deaths due to unnatural causes such as suicides and accidents. As you can see in this graph, the risk of death and suicides in the first year following pregnancy was approximately six times greater beside following a birth. It's also about three and a half times greater than the risk of, of suicide for women who had not been pregnant in the prior year. Similar differences were also identified relative to accidents. These may indicate that deaths which were identified as accidents may actually have been due to suicide or at least risk-taking behavior. To investigate these connections, a researcher in uh, the United Kingdom uh, examined records of a population of 408,000 women to identify suicide attempts, actually completed suicides, which allowed them to look back at uh, records prior to pregnancy and uh, after pregnancy. They identified that the rate of attempted suicide before an abortion was significantly lower than the rate of attempted suicide after an abortion. While the greatest risk was 
associated with deaths from suicide and accidents. There's also an increase in death from natural causes, most specifically circulatory disease that was identified in a study in California as uh, increased risk of death over an eight-year period. These and other stress-related diseases are more evident when the results are tracked for a period beyond one year because the stress, of course, takes time to have a major impact on women's health. These findings are consistent with research that shows that abortion and pregnancy loss may contribute to a general decline in good health. Based on health care sought before and after an abortion, on after, there's an 80% increase in doctor visits and 180% increased risk in doctor visits for psychosocial reasons. Women's health is obviously dependent not only on physical effects, but also the psychosocial effects which impact the physical effects later on. So behavioral problems which are associated with abortion may also cause problems. For example, nearly every study that has examined substance abuse uh, relative to pregnancy loss shows that uh, abortion is associated with increased risk of substance use. It's also associated with higher eating disorders mental, and other mental health problems. In a survey of women who were seeking post-abortion counseling, they reported that they thought more often of death, had a foreshortened sense of future, were less concerned about protecting their health, and engaged in increased risk-taking behavior. 77% had feelings of self-hatred, 55% reported suicidal feelings, 37% reported themselves as self-destructive, 28% attempted suicide, with half of those attempting suicide more than once. In this new systematic review, we also did a uh, meta-analysis, which is the combining of results from both Finland and Denmark, two of the countries in which uh, a lot of this data came from. Uh, and it showed that the risk of death uh, after abortion was 2.7 times greater than the risk of death following a birth overall compared to a 1.8 increased risk of death following miscarriage compared to birth. When the results of these various studies are projected on the national population in the United States, the effect of elevated mortality rates after abortion may contribute to anywhere between 2,000 and 7,000 more deaths among women each year. What can be done? Well, first we need to do better research. We need to improve data collection and then take more analyses so that we can better identify the subpopulations of women who are at greatest risk. One way this could be done is to use the fetal death certificates in New York, which have never been linked with the death certificates and kind of analysis that we are talking about here. But ever since the early 1970s, New York has been recording fetal death certificates for both abortion and miscarriage. These certificates could be and should be used to link with death certificates of adult women to identify pregnancy history of, of women who have died and undertake the analyses that we've just described. We recommend that other states should also pass laws that require fetal death certificates to gather data on both abortions and death certificates. So that data can then be linked to other medical records to identify the impact of pregnancy loss on women's health. The second thing that should be done is that we need to identify women who are at the greatest risk of having negative effects following abortion or miscarriage so we can provide referrals and interventions to ameliorate the negative effects of pregnancy. This can be done by using the 15 risk factors identified by the American Psychological Association's Task Force on Mental Health and Abortion to identify those groups of women who are, face more psychological problems after abortion. Many of these same factors would also apply to miscarriage or other natural losses. We believe that doctors should be alert to the fact that the history of pregnancy loss may impact many aspects of a woman's life, and that prior pregnancy losses, voluntary or involuntary, are sensitive issues for many women, which they may be hesitant to discuss. Therefore, we highly recommend that as a standard intake question or in periodic updating of patients, doctors should make a gentle, non-judgmental query, have you had any pregnancy losses, like miscarriage or abortion or neonatal death? This kind of question, which non-judgmentally names each type of pregnancy loss, gives women permission to discuss any sensitive feelings regarding past pregnancy losses, and also opens up opportunities to discuss any lingering concerns when women do report a prior pregnancy loss. Or for women considering a termination of pregnancy, we recommend that the clinician should then use the 15 risk factors identified by 
the APA to help identify the women who are at greatest risk of problems and may most benefit from it from additional counseling or other services. Given the dose effects observed, screening for history of pregnancy loss is especially important in preparing treatment plans for women in all subsequent pregnancies.